Election day is a little over a month away and Senate races are tightening up across the country. In Pennsylvania, Republican Dr. Mehmet Oz gaining ground on Democrat John Fetterman and his neck goiter. Fetterman's been up big for months, but the race, it is now considered a toss-up. And Arizona Republican candidate Blake Masters pulling within just three points of incumbent Democrat Senator Mark Kelly, who was up by like 11,000 points just a couple months ago. And in Georgia, oh no, pro-life Republican candidate Herschel Walker battling a big October surprise with a woman now claiming Walker once got her pregnant, then paid for an abortion. So could that alleged scandal cost him the seat, Republicans, and the Senate majority? All right, here with me tonight, the spectator editor-at-large, Fox News contributor, and recent guest on my podcast, Ben Dominich. Welcome back, Ben. Great to be with you, Kennedy. It's a really uh, competitive situation going into the final weeks uh, headed into November. And I certainly think that all three of the races that you highlighted are really going to be decisive in determining uh, what the outcome really is and whether Republicans are able to take the Senate. I don't think that uh, Walker's going to be able to do it because I was, I was watching this come out this week and I was like, okay, this is like four and a half weeks out. They've got much more on him, I do believe. And like, what happens two weeks out and one week out? I think, I think Herschel Walker's in real trouble. So there's, there's a two sides of the whole kind of clear the field in order to become the nominee thing, which is what Herschel Walker did. You know, he had the Trump endorsement, so he didn't have to go through a competitive primary in order to get to the point of being the nominee. The downside of that, of course, is that none of this dirty laundry gets aired earlier in the cycle mm. where you could have had an opportunity to recover from it, to you know, message it, to try to work around it, to have some kind of graceful period of, of saying, you know, I've learned from my past mistakes. Instead, you have this kind of coming at the end of this very you know, uh, fractious campaign. And I don't think that Herschel Walker is necessarily someone who has the political capability to be able to navigate the scenario. Now, ultimately, I think for Republican voters, in Georgia, they're going to be there for him. Mm -hmm. They're going to come home and they're going to support him because he's the red tie versus the blue tie. They want to have a, a Senate that's uh, run by Republicans and not by Democrats. But I think for a lot of independent voters, this is the kind of thing that turns you off. It's closer to the Roy Moore experience than sort of the Donald Trump access Hollywood experience, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and and Roy Moore, a Republican in Alabama, a lost to Doug Jones at the last minute. And Herschel Walker's son, Christian, coming out saying, my dad is a liar. Uh, I, I don't think that, oddly enough, I don't think that helps Look, I, I think Herschel Walker's a really talented guy. He's obviously somebody who, you know, was a, an epic sports hero mm -hmm. for the people of Georgia and for a lot of other fans across the country. But I also think he's someone who is an outsider, who's never won statewide, never even run statewide before. And that really turns out to be historically a defect. So it's a real coin flip, I think, at this point when it comes to the Georgia seat. Well, I, well, we'll see what happens in the next couple of weeks in terms of polling. But, but you know, some polls have him a point apart. Some even have Walker up by a point. Uh, we will see Arizona, Blake Masters, you know, again, one of those candidates that was Trump endorsed. And a lot of people wrote off because he was so far behind Mark Kelly. How has he come within three percentage points? Well, Mark Kelly is, unlike uh, Kristen Sinema, the other uh, senator from uh, Arizona, someone who's really been a lockstep Democrat vote when it comes to all of these leftist policies. He's not someone who has charted his own path or been an independent voice in any real way. And while he may have a nice story when it comes to his background and being an astronaut and that kind of thing, that only buys you so much. Blake Masters is not someone who's naturally gifted when it comes to retail politics. He, I think even he might admit that. He's someone who is kind of a Silicon Valley nerd guy uh, who is running in this campaign because he has strong ideological views and mm -hmm. he has the support of, of billionaire Peter Thiel, who uh, most recently is, is clearly getting back involved in this race, which I think could be a critical and decisive factor. Arizona is not a red state or a blue state. It is a purple state. And they, they and like it that this, way. And they, they actually, they like that they cinema do. digs her heels in and she doesn't toe the party line. That's why she was elected. All right, so exactly. uh, we only have 30 seconds. Oz versus Fetterman, who wins in Pennsylvania, at least at this point? 
You know, I actually would put my money behind Dr. Oz, and I believe that one of the big reasons for that is that Fetterman, he doesn't have, uh, I believe, the momentum behind him anymore. I believe that Oz has convinced enough people he's actually better at retail than I think uh, Fetterman is at this point, unfortunately, yeah. given his health issues. Uh, and I think that Oz is actually going to be able to deliver at the end of the day yes. in, in what could be the most decisive race that we see well, across it's, the country. Well, it's, it's going to be exciting. I don't think we're going to see everything decided on election night, but we will be there. Completely for all agree, of it. Ben Dominich, thank you so much. Good to talk to you. Great to be with you.